Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we discuss medical topics and lifestyle. In this video today, we are talking about the assessment of abdominal pain. So we're gonna cover the basics um, of abdominal pain, how to assess it, um, some quick things to kind of know how to memorize uh, what we're looking for. And, um, and yeah, that's basically a nice and easy video for today. Let's get into it. So before we get into how to actually assess for abdominal pain, um, we need to know a little bit about the anatomy. So the regions of the abdomen is what I'm talking about more specifically. So this is an example of how you can split up the regions of the abdomen into nine separate regions. So as you can see here, I've allocated numbers to each region. So you have the right hypochondrium, the epigastrium, the left hypochondrium, the uh, right lumbar region, the umbilical region, left lumbar region. Um, then we have the right inguinal region. And then at the number eight there, we have the hypogastrium. And uh, then we have the left inguinal region as well. Now, there are multiple ways to categorize the sections of the abdomen. This is just one of them. And later on in the video, we'll get to a few more. So when we say that somebody has abdominal pain, we can sometimes say, oh, he has, or she has abdominal pain in the right inguinal region, for example. Now, this is generally how we're talking about it. But sometimes the signs of abdominal pain may be unclear in certain groups of patients. So for example, the elderly or children or those patients taking steroids. So it's worth keeping that in mind. So the main way to assess for abdominal pain and whether, whether you're actually a student studying for exams or whether you're just thinking about your own abdominal pain, the main way is Socrates. So Socrates wasn't just a cool Greek philosopher. Um, he's actually a mnemonic that we use in medicine where he can define the assessment of abdominal pain for us. So the site of pain stands for the S, onset, the O, character of pain, radiation, associated symptoms, timing, exacerbating factors, and severity. So that is Socrates, and that's what we're going to cover in this video going forward. So the first thing is the site of pain. So where does it actually hurt us? So um, a few seconds ago, we showed that we can categorize the abdomen into nine different regions. There are other ways to split up the abdomen, as you can see here. So I personally like to just be very simple and, uh, and uh, you know, use the far right one. So the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant, but you know, it, it really does vary individual to individual. These are kind of the general ways we categorize where the site of the pain is, and, and that's basically it. And it's super important to actually understand that that is uh, incredibly important. I mean, where does it actually hurt? Because each specific location can tell us about a different um, thing that is hurting us, be it the pancreas or the ovary or, or, or the stomach. So that's when it comes to the site of pain. That's why that's so important in the assessment of abdominal pain. And we move on to the onset of pain. So um, this is all about timing. So how long has it been going on for? How did the pain actually start? And has it changed over time? So for example, in appendicitis, the pain can start in one location and then in the, end up in another location. So from the left side to the right side, um, how did it start, right? So did it start after doing something in particular? So these are all things that can guide us. So for example, if I was lifting a heavy, heavy box in my garage and then I suddenly got a pain in my right side, well then is that, are the, is that the ribs, right? Or is it something else? So onset of pain. Then we move on to the character of pain. So when we ask a patient or when we ask somebody, describe the pain to us. So is it a colicky pain that comes and goes? Um, is it as a result of something else? Is it dull? Is it coming in waves? Does it throb? Is it sharp and stabbing? So the character of pain is quite important in describing and when assessing abdominal pain because it can guide us in certain directions. So is it a sharp pain only when we move? Well, that gives us a clue, right? So that could that be a musculoskeletal thing? Only when we move does it cause us pain, for example, or is it something else? So that's that's the character of pain. 
And then the next thing is radiation. So the pain doesn't have to be just localized to the abdomen. So sometimes the pain radiates down the leg, for example, or up to the shoulder. And these things can give us clues as to what is going on within the actual abdomen. So radiation is a key component when asking about the history and assessing for abdominal pain. Okay, so now let's go into some associated symptoms tying into tying into the um, radiation side of things. So are there other things going on? So is there diarrhea? Is there nausea and vomiting? Um, is there something a bit more systemic going on? So does the patient have temperature or, or um, is their heart rate flying up? These are all things that point us in a certain direction when assessing abdominal pain because at the end of the day, we're not just assessing abdominal pain, we're assessing an individual as a whole. So we have to take the whole picture into consideration and make a plan from there. So are there any associated symptoms? Because these can often guide us in certain directions. So that's very important to know when assessing abdominal pain, and that's what the A stands for, associated symptoms. Then we move on to timing or the pattern of the pain. So this is where we start to get a little bit of overlap with some of the other features of Socrates. So is it constant pain? Is it happening only at night or during the day? Is there a relationship with food? Um, and uh, is it constant or intermittent? So this can be related to the, um, to the onset of pain, similar to what we discussed a few moments ago. And as time goes on, when you assess abdominal pain, all these things will merge into one kind of big question when you start taking the history. So it's not so much, oh gosh, is this, is this part of the timing when it comes to assessment of the abdominal pain or is this part of the onset? Don't, you're not going to be thinking that way, but rather it's all going to merge into one and become a bit more fluid when you're assessing abdominal pain. But this is very important. There is a bit of overlap, but this is what the T stands for. So timing or pattern of abdominal pain. Now, similar to associated symptoms that can be happening elsewhere in the body, are there any exacerbating features? So that's what the E stands for. And are there any things that make it feel better? So is it, um, is it related to medication, right? Is it happening every time you eat something? Is it happening every time you, you know, you stand up? Is it happening every time you uh, go to the toilet? So these are all things that point us in a certain direction once again. And then are there any relieving factors? So do, does this make it better? Does this, does this painkiller make it better? Does this stronger painkiller make it better? So that can often determine, uh, determine how, severe the pain is and um, and what's going on. So did anything help it improve in the past? What happened last time when you got this pain? So these are all things to think about when you're talking about exacerbations or relieving factors. And then it's all about severity. So how severe is the pain? You can use many different ways to kind of scale it. So is it, how severe is it on a scale of one to 10? Circle the smiley face here or the sad face in terms of the pain if you're assessing abdominal pain in kids. So there's a number of ways of doing it, but I like to use on a scale of one to 10 um, because it paints a picture. You know, Is it as bad as last time? What's going on? How severe it is? So that's severity in abdominal pain. And the final letter in Socrates. And then for the end, like I said, we're looking at somebody as a whole. We're not looking at them just as their abdomen. So we're doing other examination as part of the package of assessment of abdominal pain. So is there a temperature? Check their pulse, check their blood pressure. Um, how do they look themselves? Do they look like they're in shock? You know, is their skin purple? Um, check their abdomen. Uh, do a rectal examination or a vaginal examination if needed. Consider urine testing and checking their glucose levels. So these are all things that come in a basic package of assessing a patient as a whole in addition to their abdomen. And then finally, what's the point of all this? So we look at abdominal pain and we categorize it according to the region and what's going on with the individual because there can be so many different things happening. So the upper abdomen has certain organs, right? So we can, you know, I mean, as you can see here, there's so many different things. And this is just one way of categorizing what can be happening in which area. So um, th this, this is it. And there are different ways of doing it. So for example, these are differential diagnoses of, of the organs. 
but we can also categorize it according to systems. So is it a renal issue? So is it a renal colic, a UTI, kidney infection? Um, is it a gastrointestinal problem? So has the bowel perforated? Is there appendicitis? Is there pancreatitis? Then is it a gynecological issue? Ovaries, endometriosis, um, ectopic pregnancies? Is it is it not abdominal at all or pelvic? You know, is it gastritis? Is it your heart? Is it uh, is it something else going on completely? Is it a hormonal issue? Is it Addison's disease? So there's so many things that can be going on when assessing this. So it's just important when we're assessing abdominal pain, this is how you do it, Socrates. Like and subscribe for more. We'll share more videos every week. Leave a comment in the section below about what you want us to cover, and we'll see you in the next one.